Does the following reaction undergo an SN2 or an SN1 reaction? What are the products formed? Add lone pairs on the appropriate atoms and place full and partial charges on the atoms. Identify the nucleophile and electrophile. The cyanide ion is a great nucleophile that is sterically unhindered. The electrophile is the alkyl bromide. Is the electrophile accessible to a nucleophilic attack, or is it sterically hindered? Is it allylic, benzylic, methyl, primary, secondary, tertiary? The alcohol halide in this reaction is secondary, and the electrophilic carbon is slightly hindered. It could undergo an SN1 or an SN2 reaction. Is the solvent polar protic or polar aprotic? The solvent is acetone, which is aprotic, and will not solubilize cations and anions well. It will not promote an SN1 reaction. This is enough information to determine if it is an SN1 or SN2 reaction. The solvent is aprotic, which does not promote an SN1 reaction. The alkyl halide is secondary and will undergo an SN2 reaction. The cyanide ion is a great nucleophile. This is an SN2 reaction. Use arrows to illustrate the mechanism and show bond formation and breaking. These arrows will show you what the products are. Now, negative goes to positive. The electrons on the cyanide ion's carbon will attack the partially positively charged carbon on the electrophile. This arrow shows the formation of a new carbon-carbon bond. Since there cannot be 10 electrons on the electrophilic carbon, the carbon-bromine bond must break. This is what the second arrow shows. It shows the movement of the electrons from the sigma bond to the bromine atom. After drawing your arrows, you know what your products are. But don't forget stereochemistry. The starting material has an S configuration, and since an SN2 reaction occurs from the backside of the carbon leaving group sigma bond, inversion occurs at the stereogenic carbon to produce the R product. Since the bromide ion is a much weaker base than the cyanide ion, this reaction would produce the products in a good yield.